Right, YouTube, Shadow King, King Nazru. And I'm here with my review of Dragon Ball Super, episode 107. I'm sorry this episode, this review is coming a little late. Uh, me and Mom were continuing to watch Game of Thrones. We're halfway, at the halfway point of season 5. Uh, I'm also late because we just got re some recent news that another member of our family has passed away. Uh, due to some terminal illness. We've lost a lot of good people this year. Uh, so, uh, if you guys can keep your, keep your, keep them in your prayers, that, that'd be nice. I'd really appreciate that, because we really need it this time. Uh, but let's get on to the review, shall we? So, after the disappointment that was 106, though not as disappointing as 104, which I never want to see again, even if it comes in the English dub, uh, we start off with episode 107 with the Omni King and the Grand Peas doing a recap. And, of course, since the Omni Kings apparently are not good at math, the Grand Prix has to tell them that there's 36 fighters left in the tournament. So, yeah, we're pretty much at the halfway point with all these fighters. And we pretty much recap. Uh, uh, Universe 6 and Universe 7 seem to be the healthiest group, as they have still have 8 fighters left. Uh, Universe 3, I think, has like 6, fi yeah, six fighters left. Which is a lot more than I thought they'd, they'd had. I thought they'd be down to like their four or three of them left. Uh, uh, Universe 4 has four, although you can only see two, and even Beerus and the other. Krillin, Tien, and the other gods of Universe 7 all thought that was suspicious that they could only. That they could only see two yet, they should have had four because six of their fires have been eliminated. Which and Beerus is really upset by this because he knows that Catella is up to something, and of course Catella pretty much is since he's a sneaky bastard. Uh, Universe Two has about six fighters, so yes, yeah, uh, Hell's team is doing rather well. Uh, am I thinking get any universe? No, no, no. Then we got uh, Universe 11. And Universe 11 has only three fires, which puts them at a numerical disadvantage. Uh, but you gotta remember, these three are Dispo, Topo, and their main boy, Jiren. So yes, it, as uh, Vermouth, the god of destruction of Universe 11, said that it's all about quality, not quantity. And they feel that as long as they got these three, they should be A-OK. -okay. Especially if they can keep Jiren in the tournament. Uh, then we cut to uh, Frost. Who's having a flashback to when he confronted Shampa about his terms for joining the tournament. And Shampa naturally would think that uh, Frost, after cheating and losing in the God Destruction tournament... That he was in no position to be making uh, conditions for participating, and that in fact that he should be lucky that he should that uh, Shepard doesn't hakai him out of existence. But uh, Frost says that if he does pardon his uh, transgressions and let the whole universe forget forgive him, and also support his business campaigns, uh, he would. Uh, do everything thing he can to defeat Universe 7. Which intrigues Shampa because he wants to get up on Beerus. Which is odd since Beerus helped restore his universe's Earth. So Shampa should really feel some form of gratitude towards Beerus. Uh, but I guess siblings can all be good. And Frost goes off to uh, carry out his revenge against Universe 7. Specifically Vegeta. And... Uh, then we cut to 
uh, Master Roshi, who is still trying to gather his strength back. But, uh, Master Roshi, uh, is caught by, uh, caught by Frost. And Fro and Frost, uh, ambushes, uh, Master Roshi and is able to handle him easily as expected. Though Master Roshi and his buff form was able to get a few good hits. Not sure how, because... Frost is at least as strong as the Super Saiyan uh, Vegeta and Goku. I mean, sl slightly weaker, though he's probably gotten stronger at this point. But then again, so is Goku and Vegeta, but whatever. He's around their level. So, uh, Roshi shouldn't be able to do anything, but whatever. Uh, ultimately, Frost does get the upper hand. And, uh, since Frost clearly proves that he can't be, uh, bested by strength, and is continuously torturing Roshi, Roshi has no choice but to do the evil containment wave again. And he manages to catch Frost off guard, naturally since he's never seen the evil containment wave, and was about to throw him in the jar, but again, since he's known that he's low on stamina and might potentially die from this, he tries to rush the process, which causes him to miss, and he fails. Though, Frost is shaken by this. Speaking of shaken, uh, we cut to uh, Universe 11, where the uh, Universe 3 Supreme Kai wanted to gather data on the, all the other fighters, Specifically, Jiren, because he knows because he doesn't know much about him, but he senses that he's a force to be reckoned with. It, so he sends Maji Kayo, that uh, that robot that's uh, composed of liquid metal, uh, to fight Universe Eleven, and Dispo decides to handle him, which he seems to do easily at first. Even coming up with his own Justice Crush attack, which does a, quite a bit of damage to his body. So yes, we got another Justice move. Justice! Uh, and Majikaya is begging uh, them to, to go easy on him, because if they he takes another attack like that, he might die. And Topo is telling him to... Telling Dispo to not let his guard down. Which Dispo ignores because he, well, he's a bit of a cocky bastard. And despite to do his justice kick, which is the same move that uh, Gohan does his great Saiyan man, odd. And he hits Majikayo. But since Majikayo is basically like a me metallic version of Majin Buu, he's able to absorb... Uh, Dispo with a large amount of his body and holds him captive and gets ready to uh, cut off his arms. I mean, not his arms, his ears. Then uh, Topo tries to uh, save his comrade, but Jiren says, uh, Nah, I got this. I'm going to handle this fool. And Majikai was all happy to oblige because he was the opponent that he wanted to fa face in the first place. He prepares to make a giant fist, which looks comedic, but this is Dragon Ball, so yeah, he, that comes with the territory. But Jiren is not impressed, and he proceeds to beat him in one punch! Yes, you got your obligatory one punch, man, reference. And yes, all the Dragon Ball and One Punch Man fans are comparing, saying that Jin's basically a parody of Saitama now. Which, if that's the case, that means Go if Goku beats him, that'll finally put an end to the whole Goku is somehow weaker than J than Saitama, which is not the case if you compare their feats. And the Goku is leagues above J Saitama. Uh, but anyway... Uh, Majikaya was eliminated via one punch from Jiren, and this is such an impressive feat that even Goku is unnerved by how much power Jiren has. So yes, Goku is really starting to see that 
he's better keep uh keep his toes on with Jiren because one false move and he could get screwed. Yeah, Goku, that new transformation you're gonna be getting, you need it. You need it bad. Cause su it definitely looks like Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan is not gonna cut it. I don't even think Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan with Kaioken is gonna work. Uh, then we cut back to uh, Frost uh, fighting Master Roshi, and F Frost, uh, not wanting to take any chances, uh, gets upset and tries to fight R Roshi more seriously. Then he spots uh, Vegeta and comes up with a plan, and he tries to get Vegeta's attention with a death beam, and naturally Vegeta takes the bait like an idiot. And while he's torturing uh, Master Roshi, Frost gets blindsided by Vegeta's kick. And Vegeta wants to put it into Frost because he hates his guts. He's just like Freeze. Uh, I, don't, I don't know, Vegeta. I kind of like Frost slightly better than, Fr than Frieza. Uh, oh, I seem, I seem to be running short on time. Anyway... Uh, Frost tries to, uh, trick Vegeta, but he's not buying his bullshit. They fight, and Magenta gets involved. Uh, Roshi tries to use the, use the evil containment wave on Magenta, but, uh, Frost, uh, ca catches the, the evil containment wave and throws it at Vegeta. Yes, apparently he could do that. And throws him into the jar that was meant for him. Roshi tries to rescue him, but he fails. But then he throws him like a tiny key blast, which was the last of his strength, and frees Vegeta with it by directing it when Frost dodged the attack. And Vegeta goes Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, uh, takes off those uh, molten lava ear, ear muffins that uh, Magenta was using to block out Vegeta's insults so he wouldn't be. You know, have, have his weakness exposed, but now, which means he did learn from his past mistakes. But now that they're gone, he was, he was vulnerable, and he pretty much gave up the fight, so Vegeta just kicked him out. And Frost did one of his key smoke bombs. And then Vegeta says that, uh, yeah, you've done your part, it's time for you to retire, old man. And Master Roshi complies. I didn't... I think it would have been better if Roshi just did that of his own accord because he should have realized that he's done his part and he can't keep it with a new generation. It would have been much like an homage to Dragon Ball. And it kind of is, but it's kind of less impactful. But he, in the, but still, he did end up getting the respect of Beerus, which is kind of refreshing and nice layer to, go, to uh, Beerus' character. And we end off with Goku fighting off with Ribrianne because uh, I guess she wanted to fight Goku uh, because she's probably figured that with him gone it'll be Universe 7 will be severely weakened don't worry we'll get a better reason later as the spoilers tell and oh no I have to say this was a pretty good episode uh, we get some more but we got more display of Jiren's power. We got to see Frost be proactive. Uh, more good character moments with uh, Master Roshi. Uh, some build-up to the plans of uh, Universe 4. And so many other things. So that's my review of Episode 107. I'll catch you guys later.